Nabataeans. These Nabataeans met them on friendly terms and even warned them about atrocities that the Seleucids had been committing in a nearby Jewish settlement. Now, as for Judas Maccabeus and his brother Jonathan, they passed over the river Jordan, and when they had gone three days' journey, they lighted upon the Nabataeans, who came to meet them peaceably, and who told them how the affairs of those in the land of Gilead stood, and how many of them were in distress, and driven into garrisons, and into the cities of Galilee, and exhorted him to make haste, to go against the foreigners, and to endeavour to save his own countrymen out of their hands. To this exhortation, Judas hearkened, and returned to the wilderness, and in the first place, fell upon the inhabitants of Bosar, and took the city. Again, this fragmentary glimpse is fascinating but frustrating. The Nabataeans seem to have had a long-standing, friendly relationship with the Judean people, and were apparently supportive of their rebellion. It's possible that the Nabataeans, clearly valuing their own independence, viewed the Judean struggle for freedom with a great deal of sympathy. But, no doubt, they also enjoyed the opportunity to cause trouble for the Seleucid Empire, their powerful rivals to the north. An inscription at the archaeological site of Halusa in the Negev Desert contains the first mention of the name of a king of Nabatea. This inscription, written in a very early form of Nabataean, says only the following. This is the place which Netairu made for the life of King Aretas, king of the Nabataeans. This King Aretas was the first king of Nabatea that we can definitively put a name to, and it's clear that by this time, Nabatea was not just a tribal confederacy, but actually a kingdom. Half a century later,